Hey everybody. Woo it's July 4th, but of course this won't get posted on July 4th. It'll probably be the next day or so. But um, I had done another painting. Let me grab it. This one here, it's dry. I did it yesterday and these kind of paintings dry so quickly. It's just fabulous. And, um, and as you can see, you know, it's even got almost like a satin finish on it without even doing anything. But when you put gloss on this, it just really makes those colors pop. So uh, this is an 18 by 24. I've got another one and I want to do tulips. These were just imaginary flowers and I'm going to do some imaginary tulips. But I love the colors of these variegated tulips here. So I thought, why not do kind of like a companion piece for this one? And who knows, I may even have a buyer for this already on Facebook. I wanted to show you, if you've never been able to watch an acrylic pour before, how I mix one of my last colors of paint, just so you can see. I keep all of my colors in squeeze bottles off here to the right. And I'm using all Deco Art paints, so I have a big cup of Lamp Black Floetrol. Flood is the brand. Floetrol is what it's called, latex based. It cannot be oil based. This you can get at Home Depot, Lowe's, most hardware paint stores, and on Amazon. I mix my color one to one ratio one part paint, one part Floetrol into a cup first. So right now I've got orange flame. I was running low on my orange and I decided to use orange flame this time. It's got a little more oomph to it and um, a little deeper. So I've got the paint in my cup, about two ounces. I'm going to take my flow troll here and I just eyeball it. I don't measure and I put about the same amount of Floetrol as there is paint. And I'm going to stir that up. I have, this is kind of what I call a swiping technique. So it's a little different from regular acrylic pours or dirty pours. This is where you do it with a little bit more intention. So the, pro the process is just a little bit different but kind of the same recipe and techniques of as far as swiping and that kind of thing. And um, so that's pretty good right there, straight out of the bottle. Two ounces of Deco Art to two ounces of Floetrol and you've got your mixture pretty much good to go. Then I have my spot on treadmill lubricant and I like the cells that happen. So when you see this canvas here, if you zoom in, this is what I'm referring to as cells or lacing. And the silicone in the paint is what makes it ha cause lacing. The treadmill lubricant, which is 100% silicone, I do, I've got four ounces of paint mixture, so I add four drops. One, two, three, four. Close that up. I wear gloves to protect my hands because I have my hands in water so much and different things painting that they stay dry and my hands get stained very easily. So I always try to wear gloves. And I'm going to mix this in pretty good. But if I were doing a pour where I was pouring onto my canvas and I wanted big juicy cells, I would just stir once or twice and leave it be. Or I would use the OGX coconut milk, which is the anti-breakage hair serum that everybody loves to use. This makes wonderful, wonderful cells. But I like small cells for this style of swiping, so I stir it quite a bit. And then I take it and I pour it straight into my squeeze bottle. And the squeeze bottles are in my link, the Amazon link that takes you straight to Amazon. 
and I have a list of recommendations of products that I use and it's quite lengthy. I have different paint colors, I have all kinds of tools and things that I use listed. The silicone, I have everything on there pretty much and um, if you scroll down almost towards the bottom because there's like probably a couple of hundred items in that recommendations list, there is uh, eight pack icing bottles that are eight ounces, which is what this is. It has a screw on lid. The plastic is thicker than your dollar store squeeze bottles. There's no chance of you squeezing and the top coming off, which has happened to me when I've used the cheaper bottles. And this has a screw off lid with a smaller opening. And that's what I love about these squeeze bottles is you have way more control with the smaller opening. And the squeeze bottle keeps it nice and dry so that it's not gonna dry out. This is butcher paper on the table and it is also in my Amazon link and it's somewhere on the list there and um, it's a 50 foot roll by 30 inches deep so I keep my kitchen table covered and I paint on my kitchen table and so my tripod, my camera, everything is on my kitchen table. This is a black pre-primed canvas that I got from Michaels put away my inspiration picture just to refer to, get everything else out of the way. And then, like I said, I've got my, my black that's already mixed here. And so I'm gonna lay out a layer of black. I don't think I'm gonna use this tool, the pull trowel today. This is also in the Amazon link. These are hard to find and um, I ordered mine from Home Depot a long time ago and they don't always have them in stock so it's also on my Amazon link. This is a really cool tool, gives you a lot of control and it's great for spreading out stuff kind of super quick. You want it you know, fairly even, it does not have to be perfect. I just scoot the trowel along the edges. There is no silicone in the black or white. So I'm working on a slightly wet canvas. It's not like a super thick layer of black. It's just a thin coat. And then I'm gonna cover this black back up. I made a big old cup of it and my black bottle is full. So right now I'm just keeping it in a plastic solo cup. So I probably will not use this tool today because on the other one, I did kind of large leaves. On the tulips, I'm gonna do more vertical leaves, I believe, because that's typically how tulip leaves are. They're long and more narrow. So I don't think I'm gonna use this, so I'm gonna put it over here. Uh, I'm gonna put the flow troll away. And so my plan is, is to do and I also put my caps in a cup, that way you don't lose them. I'm gonna do the red, which is Santa red. This is, what did I mix? Orange flame, cadmium yellow. I've got my titanium white in the bottle. I have my black in a bottle. The white and black do not have silicone in them. So for the leaves, I've got Festive Green, one of my favorites, Sour Apple. The Peacock Teal, which is a blue-green. I mix Ultra Blue Deep into it and a Dark Evergreen to make it deeper with the Peacock Teal. I may throw a little Desert Turquoise in and maybe the uh, Teal Mint, which is in the little bottle. Uh, you also make sure that you have plenty of paper towels, wet and dry if you need it, around for after you swipe, you always wipe your tool off so that it's clean every time that you swipe. And 
I've got my plastic scrapers. I don't think I'm going to use the large one. So I've got a medium and a smaller one. I have this um, palette knife. It's a Liquitex palette knife. It's kind of large and I may use it. I may not. I have a smaller one that's, I like it because it's rounded and it's not pointed. I've got my old store card, a skewer, a straw, I've got uh, tubing to blow through, and I also cut out a piece from a plastic cup. But the plastic is not super sturdy, but I made like a, a rounded edge on one end for swiping with that I may or may not use. I'm definitely going to try it to see if it works because I didn't, instead of a flat edge, I wanted a rounded edge to be able to swipe with. So I think I've got all the colors that I'm possibly going to use. I tell you what, let's pull out the alizarin crimson because these red flowers may need a hint of something darker at the bottom. This one is dark chocolate and I'm going to pull it out just in case I need it. I don't plan on using it, but I might. So all my tops, the lids of my bottles are in a cup for safekeeping. So I'm going to start like I did yesterday with the stems. I think this time I'm going to start with the peacock teal color. And I want to do let's do one. I'll make up that a little bit longer. Two. three. And with it being fluid, it does, you know, kind of lay down a little bit on the canvas. So um, it's not going to stay in a real thin line if, if it's all very fluid at the moment. So this is the festive green. I'm just going to go and I'm going to figure out which one is overlapping which to keep with that kind of thing. Whoa. See, it was it was stopped up and I squeezed and there it came. So what I'm doing is basically lifting this back off here. We're going to try this one again. So I go back over it. Let me get my hands clean here. The peacock teal I'll try the festive green again. I'm going to make this one the, the top one. So these will be kind of behind the other stem. So you kind of think of this as like these would be the highlights on the stem. You go with the darker color and then you build up to the lighter color. This is the sour apple. And it's not important to have like a super sturdy hand because it is fluid and it's not going to stay in a perfect line. It's going to bleed into the other colors and that kind of thing. This came out too thick here. So I'm just kind of putting my finger up through it a little bit. And the paint will kind of level back in on its own without me having to do a whole lot of anything. So that just gives first the stem structure. I want to do it more. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try one. I'm not going to draw them all out yet. I'm going to try one at a time. So I'm doing the peacock, the green. I'm also going to add the desert turquoise. The sour apple and I'm going to add the cadmium yellow here. So I'm going, I'm going to see if I can try it here with this palette knife first and see what happens. 
So I'm kind of wanting to swipe up and then make it come to a point if I can. Or I'm wondering, maybe I should take my store card. I might have more control. And that didn't go quite as planned. And one other thing, I forgot my white to swipe with. But this time I'm going to do it in a different layering. I'm going to do Peacock Teal, Festive Green, Desert Turquoise, Sour Apple, and Cadmium Yellow, and my white, which I forgot, a good amount of it. Now I'm just going to take it from the stem and go up. I'm not crazy about it. Scrape off edges onto pieces that I have around. So I'm going to try another one. Let's go higher up here. Well, I tell you what. I am going to use my larger scraper. I'm going to try it this way. See. Sometimes you're just not sure how it's going to pan out, so you have to be willing to try different directions and things. And um, you can always kind of re-swipe over if you don't have a ton of paint on your canvas. So let's try it this way. This may not work either. Could I do it with this? I might could do it with this. The only way to know is to try. A little bit more abstract looking, isn't it? So that extra paint just goes onto this this is poster board that has the dry erase marker finish on the top of it. I got it off Office Depot. So it's like super thick. Um, it's like poster board with the plastic coating. It's fabulous for swiping um, your tools onto and drips and things. So that one, not so much, but I'm going to overlap some different ones. So let me try one. It's going to it's going to come back this way. Because with tulip leaves, they all go in different directions. Some stand up, some lay over. And white. So let me try the tool that I originally thought I might would use. Or do I use this scraper? I'll let that float over a little bit. These are really cool colors together. I think I'm going to do one across. And maybe this time I'll do it this way again. Where you start at the center of the leaf and go out. Throw in a little of this teal mint which I've not used yet. The key is to go as lightly as possible. There we go. That one's better. And, and I want it to feel a little bit on the abstract side. I don't want it to look realistic, so that's okay if it's not perfect. That's totally okay. So I want one, one that's overlapping and coming this way, a little bit over these stems. Let's try this one for the fun of it. That's not too bad. 
Look at that prettiness on there. I've got one little side left. So then I've got all those pretty greens and blacks and stuff together. So it's very minimal paint that you lose when you're doing swipes. I'm going to take that one little edge off of that leaf. And I can also kind of like take my tool, run it through, and just kind of lightly touch it in. And add some color where it's missing. Just like you can do that with the with the skewer. So, like if I have yellow highlights on my stems, see sometimes it comes out perfectly, and sometimes it skips a little bit. So I take my skewer and I just kind of. I don't want it like. I don't want it perfect. I want it a little intermixed. For some reason, though, it's like spreading out a lot. I don't know why. Maybe my black um, is a little bit more fluid today. I don't know what the deal is, but I'm going to try to rein it in a little bit. So I'm just taking that black and pushing the color back over a little bit. It's not so fat. Then I can also come back and touch up with black there. See, I like the way it's kind of jagged here and it's not perfect. I like that. So it's good. You know, you can do this little thing and make it totally come off of the leaf as if it were some little something casual that's just coming off of them. So now we're going to do the tulips. I want these to be, you know, three. Actually, I want to do two more stems, but I don't really want the stems down here. Let me see if I can do this with just the festive green and a really thin layer. So like one comes here, the other one comes this way. And I'll put some sour apple on it. So maybe they're a little bit more up here, and then these three will be more, you know, closer to the front. I'm going to try to squeeze this in again up here. I can even take some of that yellow and just drag it with my skewer on here. So as it tries to bleed out, I'm just kind of pushing it back a little bit. Okay. Let's see if I can get this in. Even with the skewer, you've got to um, you've got to wipe it off. Let's see what I can also do is I can come in with black and just kind of pat it in with my finger, and it'll cover in some of that area. So this is going to be purely experimental. So they have kind of a a petal in the back, some on the sides, and some at the front. And so I think what I'm going to do is just kind of draw in the structure of the back petal in a way. And I'm, I've been an artist for 20 years. I can paint tulips all day long. I'm trying to do this in a fluid way so that you can learn. And um, so you don't have to have artistic training, really. 
and um, I'm learning as I go with the fluid stuff and I'm showing you as I go and that helps you so what I'm going to try to do yeah, is just drag it up a little bit So that got some black in it. I didn't really want the black in it, but that's okay. I'm going to go back and add some yellow. So this would be like basically the back petals. So I want to add a little bit of red. Oops. Get the drips. You have a drip, you just put your little black on it, tap on it a little bit, it'll level out. So I'm going to try to blow that red up. Make sure the water is not in your tubing. So that's basically the inside of the petal with the red kind of coming up from the middle. And then I want two outer petals. A little orange down here. And then a little bit of red. So with these, I want to see if I can just very lightly swipe. I pressed a little too hard. Let me see if I can scoot that color over a bit. It's such very light pressure. So those would be like the side petals. And then there's going to be a petal or two that comes up in the front of the tulip. Let's just say one is here. Let's just do one big middle one. How about that? So red and we'll go, we'll go up to orange. and then the yellow. So I'm going to try my plastic cup thing. Okay, so you can't press down too hard because it lifts it down to the black. Let me move it back. So I kind of went up too far on that one, I think. But we'll just make it work. Wipe it off. You can do it, you have to do it very gently. And the red came out a little bit far, so you just move it back kind of with your finger. And then you can put black back beside it. So maybe just a little bit more yellow on the edges. So I almost really didn't need that back petal because it's basically covered up. So it's like I said, it's kind of a learning experience as you go. 
I'm going to add some yellow. Got too many things in my hands. Kind of looks like tulips. And I'm just kind of rounding off the bottom with this alizarin crimson. And let's try this little, oh, that came out fast. A little dot of brown. Miraculously, I didn't get my shirt in the paint, and I don't know how I didn't do that. I'm going to take my finger and just move that paint out a little bit. I like, I actually like having the little bit of cell action in the flower. I like that. Okay, so we're going to work on these three here. So basically, I just need to do the outer petals first. And I, I don't even remember how I did it this quickly. I don't remember. See, I'm just winging it. It's pretty bad when you're that forgetful that you can't remember what you had done. See, so you almost need to hold it. It's a little curved. You almost need to hold it flat. But see, it's still, that's too much pressure. I can't quite control this one. Maybe even have a couple little like look like petals that come up here. I might should not have gone out so far, but they're like, um, almost like irises. I mean, tiger lilies, not irises, tiger lilies. I'm trying to keep it flat without putting my fingers in the black paint. That was not a good one. So I need um, probably something a little sturdier than this. I think I would get better control with it. that needs to come around. I 
I'm sure some of you can do way better tulips than I can. <laughs> uh, um, so I'm going to put a little lizard and crimson. And some of the brown. Can you hear the frog outside? I don't know if you can hear that. We have frogs. It rained just for a few minutes and I live in the country. And then these frogs start making their noises. can't decide which way I want to go with them. I think I like them out better. This one is too much. I'm going to go back and add a little of this darker peacock teal through the stems. And this one is just way too wide. So you just go through and drag your finger and lift it off. and then wipe, wipe your finger off. And what will happen is that black will settle back in. So I'm gonna put a little bit of white in the stalks. Just kind of gives them like a highlighted look a little bit. Just to kind of tie it in with the other one just a little bit. And this one doesn't have a lot of white accents. I'm going to take my little writer here. Got to get the black off of it though. See that part is very faint on the leaf, so I'm just basically putting a little bit of a white accent back. And there's not, so I'm going to put a little black here because there's not a lot of anything on the canvas right there. Let me find a little, let me just, if you don't have black and you put it on your skewer, add it back in there. And then you go where you got a lot of green where it's built up, like in the stem area here. And you can take it and just kind of roll it a little bit. And spread that leafy look just a little bit over. But I like, I like how this color just kind of fades right here on the edges. And then maybe just, um, just a little highlight along the tops of the yellow, just a little bit, kind of barely there. So I think what would be pretty, I had not planned, on the, this has a needle and a needle in the top and you stick the needle in the top and the needle in the bottle. You've got to have good vision. 
but it'll seal that needle so it does not dry up inside. So I'm going to take a little bit of Purple Rain because I love purple and reds and oranges and yellows together. So I'm just putting a little dot here and there. Just for an accent. That's purple rain. Here's dots, this thing. So I'm going to put even a smaller drop right with that purple rain. And I don't want all that there to show, so I'm going to take a little bit of it off. Areas that got heavy. I probably shouldn't have put the dioxazine purple, to be honest. So here's this one, and here's the other one. And yeah, that can almost be a set. I'm just going to put in a couple more. Just kind of a hint. See, I can pick up some paint in the center here where all the paint has gathered. Because there's plenty of it. I need a little bit of yellow. That's what I need. So I'm going to put it on the end of my palette knife. little bit. I'm going to leave well enough alone. I think. <laughs> I always say I'm going to stop and then I don't stop. I've, I've noticed that on my videos and I'm sure you have too that I'll say okay I think I'm done but then I keep messing with it and I'm going to really stop messing with it. I'm going to try to Straighten out that line just a little bit. I'm going to leave that little thing here. I like that. Just give the, the leaves a little bit more of a definite shape. And that's just by kind of running my edge along where it's kind of, it's more fluid and it's just kind of, you know, gotten wispy along the edges a little bit. Take this thing and see if I can smooth myself out here. Okay. So, if you enjoyed it, and I hope you did, here's the whole thing because I had it down on the edge there. Make sure my edges are all covered. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Down in the bottom right corner is a bell beside subscribe. And if you click on the bell, you'll receive notifications when I post new videos. I appreciate your support. And there's different links underneath my video. There's a Facebook group page that I started that has about 1,200 people in it so far. And it's a way that I can connect with you on a more personal level if you want to show me photographs of your work that was inspired by me. If you have questions, it's a very sharing and caring group and we are free with advice and good tips for each other and you get to post your pictures there and have fun. So if you want to come join me on Facebook, please consider it. But I, um, I kind of like my abstract tulips. Like I said, I could paint real tulips all day long and I like the freedom that fluid art gives you to just be a little shaky, a little like, I, I don't know, but it still turns out to be something decent as far as fluid art goes. So. I'm going to bring this up to you. So there's the tulips.
and the leaves. And I like the way the edges are not quite totally defined always. That's kind of the neat thing too. So like this one here, this top one right there under that tulip, it doesn't have a perfect point to it and that's okay. That's the abstract feel of what it is. So I kind of like it. So there's my tulips.